Good morning, this is Mr. McGee, and I'm speaking to my IB biology class about the lab we just did recently. You were to pick two variables. Most of you did them regarding the human body, and a lot of you did it regarding the heart and whatnot. But I'm going to show you how to make a table and a graph, and I'll try to go as quick as I can. You can see my other videos if you want to get a little more detail on it. First step, how to make your table. Well, we need our variables. What we need to do is put our independent variable in this slot. Now, I just picked a random lab that I did in the past, so, and we're going to, in this case, do a titration lab with the number of drops of acid. And you want to put your unit in uncertainty afterwards, but in this case it's just a drop of acid. But I'm going to put, for the heck of it, go ALT-0177. That's ALT-0177 gives you this nice little plus or minus, and that's plus or minus one drop. And it just makes it look nice like that. Okay. And down here, I'm going to put my units. So our control is zero drops, followed by, well, actually, I'm going to paste this in just a minute. Then over here, we want to add our trials. But I'm going to move the screen over a little like this. So we're going to add trial 1, trial 2, trial 3, trial 4, and trial 5. Okay, And then, of course, we want a mean and a standard deviation. We just abbreviate it as SD. So we have our independent variable, and we have our dependent variable. This entire thing is our dependent variable, because really we're just getting five trials to get a mean or an average of our dependent variable. So we probably want to put a title above all this dependent variable, and the problem is I can't really do that here, so I'm going to have to right-click, insert, row, and it puts a row above everything. So here I'm going to put the amount of oxygen generated. Okay, and then again I'm going to put my plus or minus bar, Alt 0177, and then we're going to say plus or minus 5 uh, milligrams per liter of oxygen generated. This is for a different lab, but again just giving you the prompt here. I want to get this nice and centered over my this title. I want to get it nice and centered over my dependent variable, and I want to combine cells. To do that, I'm going to go Merge and Center, and now it's combined the cells. Okay, and you can also go here and uh, adjust this a little bit if you want to kind of get the rows to change or the columns to kind of look a little different, but I think it looks nice like that, and if my row is tight, it's not going to look any different. Okay, now I want to go put my raw data in place here, and... I was copying it from my other lab, so just give me a second here. I'm going to go copy my data in like this, and I'm just going to put my blank values in there like this. So as you can see, I'm going to calculate this in a minute. This is what my independent variable was and my trials. It doesn't have to be like this, but it looks nice when it's nice and centered, your data just like this. And again, this is my independent variable, and this is all my dependent variable right here with our mean being the important average of it all. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put a, I'm going to hold control and I can select multiple things and I'm going to go here and add a background to this and I like a nice little gray background. That's going to show the dependent and independent variable labels and then what I'm going to do is I want to have some dividers amongst these. So I'm just going to highlight this entire area. Actually I'm going to go ahead and highlight this entire area here and I'm going to go ahead and ask it to put a border around it all. I can put an outside border around everything or just a little inner border like this. And I want to put a little border up here, so I'm just going to click on this one cell and go to outside border. Okay, You can manipulate this, but this border thing is really nice for getting everything kind of highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and probably try to center this row as well because I like it nice and centered. And now that we got that, how do you calculate your mean? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. One of them is you can click in a formula box and go up here to functions and you search under statistics for mean or I'm sorry, average. Since it's my most commonly used one, it's already right here for me, but I'll go here to all and I'll look up average. Scroll down, average, that's your mean. Okay, now what you do is you just highlight the cell and it's gonna calculate the average. You can do that for each and every one of them, or you can click on the cell which has a function to it, an equation. Control C, that copies it, Control and C. And now you click on the cells you want to paste it. 
and you go control plus V. That's control C to copy, control V to paste. Okay? Do the same thing for standard deviation. You go over to functions, go under statistics or all, and you look up STDEV for standard deviation. STDEV. Okay? And then we just highlight our trials. Be careful not to get the mean in there as well, just the trials. So trial one through five, and then you just hit okay. That's your standard deviation. And now I can do that for each one of those, or I could just click on this equation, control C, and paste it in these four cells, control V. And that is it. Now to tidy it up a little bit more, because of our average, we want to have one more decimal point of precision than our lowest value. And in this case, they did not have any decimals. So I'm going to go ahead, highlight those, go up here to number. You can add decimal points or remove them this way and round it. But I'm going to make it so they all are rounded to one decimal point. And our standard deviation in this case, I'm going to whoops, go ahead and knock this down here too to the one decimal point of precision. Now it looks really tidy and nice. And you can see I got my independent variable and I've got my dependent variable with the mean being what we want to graph. So how do we make a graph out of this? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's actually a few ways you can do it, but basically we're going to be graphing the independent variable on the x-axis, and we're going to be graphing the dependent variable on the y-axis, just like any graph in science. I could just have these highlighted here separately. I highlighted this, held control, and then highlighted this. And then you can come up here and hit chart, and it'll automatically create a scatter plot. But for teaching, it's probably easier to do it this method. That is, just go up here to insert, and then you go up here to insert a scatter plot. And then what you're going to do is, now with this blank scatter plot, go up here to select data. Go here to add data, and now we're going to just go, we don't have to worry about series name, but we'll go over here and add our X data. This would be our independent variable for the X. Make sure you don't get the title in there. And then click that icon. Okay, now we're going to get our dependent variable. And a big mistake a lot of people make is they highlight all the trials and everything. It messes it up. For your dependent variable, we only want the average, the mean. Highlight it just like that, just the data. Click on this. Now you could put in a series title, but that's if you're going to have multiple variations. Say you're going to have acid say you're going to try or say you're going to try multiple different types of acid you may want to put a series name for each different variation of acid but in this lab we're fine with that said go ahead and click and it should look roughly like this now you're going to go over here create your chart title i'm going to put access title on there like this and i can go here and put essentially the same thing that's here the number of drops of acid okay alt 177 plus or minus one drop, okay? And then down here, the, uh, oh, I think I just reversed it. <laughs> reversed it, actually. Let me go ahead and copy that right there and paste it down here. Got my axis mixed up close enough. Okay, and then this side, whoops, the amount of oxygen generated, and then we'll go plus or minus five milligrams per liter okay now it looks good but we want to title or tidy it up go ahead and put your title right up here I'm just gonna leave it blank for right now I will say that you can leave the grid lines I personally don't like the grid lines I'm gonna get rid of them usually grid lines are nice for graph paper but if we're not using graph paper I don't think they're very necessary but you may agree or disagree not a big deal now what we need to do is get a nice little formulation to these you can leave them as is I personally like to change the little dots so I click on them and then I whoops notice that sometimes only one highlights you need to double click to get this menu to pop up but sometimes only one of these dots gets clicked on you need to make sure that all of the dots are highlighted I don't know why that's the way but that's how a lot of students get mixed up go here to marker Marker options, we're going to fill this solid color of black. And if you click off of it, it looks nice, but it's still got a blue little outline to it. So I'm going to click back on these dots here and go back to my uh, fill marker. And let's go to no border. And you know, what the heck? Let's make these dots just a little smaller. 
you can change this up, but I just think that looks really nice. Now that we've got our data points very nicely defined, uh, let's change our axis up a little bit. We probably want it to count up by 25, like 25, 50, 75, 100, instead of it counting every 20. So to change my uh, axis, I just click on this, double click, and my option should pop up here. Depends again on which version you're using. I'm using Microsoft Office 2013. Uh, 2010 and after should be the same, but it depends. Double click on the options here, and you change your major units. We're going to change this by counting every 25. Now, uh, don't worry about the minor access. That only comes into play if you're using graph paper. But at this point, it should scale itself. You can always change the scale for other things. And in this case, we could leave this as is, but I'm going to just, for the sake of argument, make this skip up. Let's do every 20. Okay? And uh, there we go. It's counting every 20 on this side, but again, you can change it as you see fit. Let's go ahead and now work on adding a tread line. Go back to our options. And here's another mistake people make as they click on this box. Excel is a picky software. Go instead to the options and go to more options. I don't know why it does that, but you just can't click on that check mark. Otherwise, it puts a line in there. You got to look at the pattern. Is it linear or is it polynomi polynomial? We tend to use polynomial in this class. It seems to fit the tread line better for a lot of the slopes. But again, figure out which tread line fits the data the best. You can change the order, although this is probably more realistic in this case. And then what you're going to do is it's nice to put the R squared value and display your equation. I like to drag that at the bottom. For this lab that I'm giving you today, you don't need this, but it is nice because the tread line will automatically calculate these statistics, which lets you use this equation and you can make a future prediction or something like that. And again, R square, anything above about 0.7 is really good. In this case, it fits our lines really good. Last part, let's go ahead and add error bars. Again, error bars are for the standard deviation. So let's go here to add error bars. And again, don't click on the line or you get a bunch of weird stuff that pops up like this. Instead, click on the uh, options triangle and then more options. And now what we're going to do is we are going to want to add our own custom values. This is one reason I don't like Google Sheets. It doesn't let you do this. So for positive value, what we're going to do, and this is tricky, we're going to tell it how many standard deviations high we want it. Click on that option and highlight all the standard deviations. Now click on the negative. That tells us how low we want these error bars to be in standard deviation. And it should make a bar just like this. Notice it's a standard deviation high and a standard deviation low. And of course, this small error bar is indicative that this 9.7 is a really small standard deviation. But of course, this 33, this is a very big standard deviation. And you can see that the graph gets messed up and everything has to be moved around. By the way, how do you paste this and copy it into your lab report after you, of course, move things around? You basically just click on something and control C, or you just right click and you copy the graph and you paste it. Be careful if you do this. Do you see what happens to your graph? You might want to think of pasting it as a picture, but make sure it's scaled properly when you paste it. Also, does anyone notice that it went back negative 25? I need to go back and fix this. Whoops. I'm going to close the box here and uh, click on my horizontal axis. I'm going to set its value to 0. Sometimes it does this, so you have to watch out for its value. We've tidied it up. Our graph looks really nice. And you know what? I'm actually going to make it only go to 125 just for today's argument. Our graph has nicely filled our screen. Very nicely filled the screen. Uh, it's labeled. Maybe you want to shrink this one a little bit. But other than that, I've got my units and uncertainties on both the x and y axis. Increments are spaced out reasonably. The graph fits. we got a tread line and error bars. I'd say this is a pretty nice graph. One more thing, Excel puts these really bizarre, I don't know what to call them, horizontal error bars, and Excel hasn't given me an answer yet on how to get rid of them or what their function is. So 
for some weird reason, you literally just got to click on them and hit delete. And that's the only other thing I can add. And your graph is done. Not hard, pretty simple. Takes some practice. We'll see you later. This is Mr. McGee.